Hi, I'm Ron Howard, and this is The Breakdown. First, I, I liked that it was a conversation provoker. Although I wasn't interested in the sociopolitical aspect of it, in the sort of overt way in which JD presented it. You know, I found it interesting, but I, I, I didn't see a movie story there. But what I did see was something that I'd been looking for, which was an interesting, complex family story that featured rural America, contemporary rural America. And when I read it, and then when I talked, more importantly, I think when I talked to J.D. Vance and heard his sound, his cadence, it was so familiar to me because between my family, which hails from Oklahoma, small town Oklahoma and agricultural Oklahoma, and my wife's family, which is uh, Wisconsin farm country and Louisiana, I, I just recognized the thought process, the sensibility, the code the strengths, the weaknesses, the foibles of uh, a lot of people who I knew, who I, I felt comfortable around, who I know well. And I felt like that the book wasn't exactly it, but the combination of the family as described in the book and what I was learning through conversations with JD and later with his family, that, that began to take shape as a movie for me. And Vanessa Taylor did a great job of developing it further. Things haven't exactly worked out for your mama. Well, it went pretty well for me because I was very interested in working with Glenn. I did a movie with her years ago about New York journalism, tabloid journalism called The Paper. We've stayed friendly. I went to see her in a play in New York. It's great. Afterwards, she said, I hear you're working on Hillbilly Elegy. I read that book and I'm really fascinated by it. So the fact that she flagged it, I said, well, we're months away from having a draft, but of course I'd love you to read it. When she read it, she said, yeah, I'd love, you know, I'd, I'd really like to be Mamaw. Unfortunately, Netflix was supportive of that. So that was, even though she's nothing like Mamaw, it, you know, it's not like she was drawing upon any particular insights to play Mamaw. It was really all about for her discovery and creation. And uh, fortunately, JD and his family made that possible through conversation, through home movies, through audio tapes, you know, everything that they could find, which wasn't a lot, but it was enough that when they saw her in character doing a scene, it just blew him away. I'll never forget it. As I, I like to think of as, myself as an actor's director. Mm -hmm. and, and they were so thrilled and moved and appreciative of what Glenn had done that it made me, made me feel great. Now, Amy, I'd always wanted to work with Amy. Um, met her a few times, didn't know her particularly well, but just a great artist, you know, has so much range. And I looked at Bev, younger Bev, especially looked a little like Amy and it just felt right to me. And she was reluctant and I couldn't quite figure out why she was reluctant. She had some thoughts about the script and Vanessa made some changes. There were very astute ideas and scenes got better and richer. We kept talking and finally she just admitted, she said, I don't know if I want to go there. This is really tough for me. And I said, well, I, I have to respect that, but I think it's important to offer audiences a character like this because it has a lot to say to a lot of people. And then finally she said yes. And it was tough emotionally. She was pleasant as hell. She's that kind of person. She's just a great, great teammate. But she never really shared what she was channeling beyond the research. Essentially, she needed to occasionally talk about sort of creating the, the rationale that kept Bev going. So we would talk about that. You know, like, what does Bev think this is, is happening right now? What, what is, what's she upset about? Why is she making this choice? And I could help her come up with a rationale that you could, you could accept somebody was basing their behavior on. She's a, she loves to rehearse. She's a hard worker. Came up with some great ideas that were her own. That motif of the hand, reaching out the hand. So useful and meaningful. And I love it when the, in the, when the collaboration yields those kinds of really distinctive choices. It's so exciting for me and important for the film. But I just trusted her. I didn't push it. I knew she'd be there. From the first time we had to face one of these scenes, I saw that she, she could get there. You know, and once in a while, I'd push her a little further or I'd draw her back a little bit. And just, you know, that's what a director does is try to, to be that first audience member and, and also create some refinements just to take to the editing room. 
which was a thing that I've done in the past with actors like, you know, De Niro or Russell Crowe, where they're improvising. They want to try a lot of different things. And that's great. Jim Carrey in The Grinch. Try a whole, you know, we have, we have a menu of possibilities now. We didn't have time for that. But in certain key places with both the Mamaw character and with Bev, Amy's character. In fact, jumping to Mamaw, we had to dial Mamaw back from everything that we heard about her everything that we understood, all the language, all the outrageous things that she did. Glenn and I, we just kind of looked at each other and realized that no one's going to believe this. They're they're just going to think that Glenn's overdoing it when in fact Glenn was underdoing it. So I trusted both of them, but I, I really left Amy kind of to her own devices when it came to that, those darker moments. And she was so nuanced about it that I was really, really blown away. So what did they do? Well, they fired my ass. What do you think they did? Oh, Beverly. Well, I was sick of that place anyway. Gainful employment was cramping her style. A lot of that began with the cinematographer and I talking, Maurice Alberte, who's a very experienced, talented cinematographer. But she also is a great documentarian, Alex Gibney. He's worked with Maurice, I don't know, 10 or 11 times. And so I really wanted a subtle, unselfconscious approach to the story but I did want to tell the story. And we experimented a lot with different, it is digital, but film stock grades, diffusion levels, color palettes, and so forth. And then coordinated that with Molly Hughes, the production designer. Very subtle things, but just to help us recognize when we're in one time and another, different camera style, shooting the Yale phase of JD's life. The camera was much more traditional, steady, straightforward compositions. But then when the echoes of the past would sort of reach him and destabilize him, then we would go back to the more kinetic handheld feel that we'd used in the younger JD's sequences so that it was on a subliminal level, hopefully you're kind of recalling that period and what it meant to him, what it was, how deep, how destabilizing it was to live through that. You may notice that it turned out that there were a lot of women in key positions on this film. I think on almost a subconscious level, I felt the female characters were so important and that I understood the attitudes, the cadences, the behavior of the male characters. But I I just on a subtle level, I wanted to get the details of these uh, women's lives to to be right, to ring true. Mom, you just took and took from her until she was practically bankrupt. Yeah, she was a goddamn saint. All she ever did was bail you out, Mom. Except when it mattered. JD in all of our conversations, was pretty clear that he did not view this as a pull yourself up by your bootstrap story. That sure, you have to wake up and you have to take agency if you're gonna make progress. But he began to recognize that without them, including Usha and including his mother, it just wouldn't have happened. And so that idea of forgiveness is something that in JD's life, has been a long, slow, gradual process. But it's so true to that family story that I wanted to I wanted to bake it in. And also, at the end of the movie, there's a key moment where JD is really feeling like he's between a rock and a hard place as to his loyalty to family and his mother and his future. And in the most subtle way, Amy does the right thing as Bev. You can almost miss it. Hopefully you won't because it's been shot and played (laughs) so that you wouldn't. But that also comes from JD, who's saying even at her lowest points, he always knew he was loved and he always he always knew she really wanted what was best for him. So to me, I said, it's not really it's not pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's a rescue and survival story. It's also a story of kind of of redemption, because here are these people who there are aspects of their past that they have real regrets about real regrets deservedly so, but there also comes an opportunity for them to make another kind of decision that really will matter in, in this guy's life and somebody who they, they love, who they care about. And it really changes the course of the family. We now know that. So I felt like that, that aspect of the story was very important, but it had to be seeded in because we're dealing with this period of crisis. Everything is a shock to the system for JD, either as the young Yale law student coming back and his whole life's almost threatening to unravel, or the young boy who's finding his way and doesn't quite know how treacherous the waters are. So again, in the way that their family story acknowledges the specifics of the kind of trauma, 
the kind of economic hardship, the special, the specific brand of addiction or cycles of dysfunction, great. The bigger idea to me was this, these things happen to families and as individuals, every family member, I mean, this is just universal. You've got to make decisions about how you reconcile the strengths and weaknesses of the family you come from and, and those things that influence them. And I really think it wasn't until Yale and this, this crisis that he really began to understand that he had a major decision going forward. And what I admire about it and tried to deal with in the story is that it, he chose not to flatly, fully reject it. Sometimes people do that and it's a courageous decision, but I'm not gonna deal with those people anymore. I'm going this way. Well, that's not JD's decision. And I do admire it because it's harder. But why can't we let her clean her own mess up for once? Because family's the only thing that means a goddamn. 